Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis and today I'm going to be discussing the idea and concept of forms in the world of martial arts and whether or not they actually matter. So first we're going to discuss what a form actually is, then we're going to discuss my personal relationship with forms throughout my martial arts study, then we're going to discuss kind of the way forms are used to teach martial arts and maybe what some of the pitfalls of that teaching method. So first, what is a form? For people who don't know what forms are, I they, they kind of are different things for every system, but overall a form is usually a pre-rehearsed routine that is meant to solidify and um, reinforce concepts and movements in a martial art. To the untrained eye, these are going to look a lot like dances. Oftentimes they're solo practices where the person is throwing punches in the air, but it is not an improv session. It is completely rehearsed and the movements and choreography um, are oftentimes have been set for hundreds of years and have been passed down from generation to generation. Um, as far as my relationship with forms, I've gone through several different martial arts systems. Some of them used forms as their core, some of them had forms as a sidebar, and other systems didn't have the forms at all. For example, when I studied Wing Chun, which is one of the arts that we teach at um, our school, when I was studying Wing Chun, the school that I went to, the forms were really the center of the entire system. That the idea was you learn the forms first, and then you kind of learn to decode the forms and what lessons the forms are teaching, and then that will give you insight onto the art. The idea behind this was that your form is your textbook. And I oftentimes describe it to my students that when you can't read and you can't write, you can still learn how to do these movements. And so it's as opposed to a student writing down information or reading information or recording themselves, you know, hundreds of years ago, people would learn these forms and these forms would essentially become textbooks because they could memorize the movements and then decode those movements and have effectively their textbook on hand. Another art that I studied that had forms was Kenpo. Now, the instructor that I had in Kenpo put zero emphasis on forms. He was very much of the mindset that the individual techniques were of the utmost importance and the forms were just kind of a side thing to do um, that really weren't all that important. And I did learn some forms from him um, along with going forth and learning other forms from Kenpo from other people. But overall, my experience was in Kenpo was that forms really weren't that important. They were just a thing that you would do um, and they helped reinforce core concepts and kind of gave you a way to solo practice, but the ultimate goal was to move away from those kind of pre-rehearsed routines. And then I also studied Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And when I studied Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there was no forms at all. That when I studied Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it was all about just application and collecting techniques and applying them as you needed to. So I've had a long range of different views of forms. So how do I personally view forms? Well, I don't actually think forms are going to make you a better fighter. Um, I really believe that the forms are interesting, they're fascinating from a historical standpoint, but as far as actually becoming a better fighter, mm, they're really not going to do it. Um, and the reason that I feel this way is I've met tons of martial artists in my life who were excellent at forms but couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. That they were terrible fighters but really beautiful at the forms. So what is the purpose of a form and why would someone practice a form if they aren't necessarily going to make you a better fighter? Well, from my standpoint, I always consider it kind of like a classic car that a classic car is sexy, it's beautiful, it's fun to drive, and it's a fascinating piece of history. Now, if I were to have a classic car, I would not necessarily try to take that classic car into a modern race against modern cars, because it would probably lose. I wouldn't try to take that classic car and say, oh, and compare it on its fuel efficiency, um, 
compared to a modern car. But it doesn't mean that I can't appreciate the classic car. It doesn't mean I can't drive the classic car. It doesn't mean that I can't understand that classic car's impact onto the way modern vehicles are made. To me, that's why forms exist today, at least for my personal taste. That you study the traditional stuff out of a curiosity for where you come from. The fact is that we tend to think that the entire throughout the entire history of martial arts that the guys who were the best of the best of the best in the history of martial arts could be plopped in today's society and still be the best. And that's not really the truth. The truth is that we've all kind of stood on each other's shoulders throughout history and each person has held up the next and we've learned so much from people as we progress forward. If you take somebody like Bruce Lee, who at his time was really ahead of his game, if you took him into today's martial arts world, um, he probably wouldn't do too well in a mixed martial arts tournament um, if you had him exactly the way he was uh, before he died. Now, you give a mind like Bruce Lee, you give him six months to catch up, and maybe he's kicking all our asses because he was brilliant. But the fact is, we've taken, we took what he had, what he taught us, and we've improved upon it as time has gone forward. And so if you're studying a traditional martial art, you aren't so much learning how to fight in a way that is most efficient today, but whether you're exploring what was most efficient in the past. And for me, learning a form is just that. It's preserving that history. It's learning how it is they used to fight. It's learning how they used to teach and preserving that piece of history for all of the future. Um, and this is important because there's a lot of information in other cultures that don't value history as much that is lost. For example, not a lot of people know how the Greeks fought hand to hand. A lot of people don't know how the Romans fought hand to hand. We have some idea based off of historical documents, but there is not a direct lineage from that time period all the way to a modern day where people have preserved that history and we know exactly how they did it. Whereas with something like Wing Chun, whereas I'm sure there's been modifications throughout the ages, because of those forms, we have a pretty damn good idea of how Wing Chun was done very long ago because it has been preserved from student to teacher, teacher to student, so on and so forth as it continues through. To me, that's the purpose of the form. As far as the problems with forms, why is it that a form doesn't make you a better fighter? That's kind of a, a question because there's a lot of people who believe that practicing their forms is in fact making them a better fighter. Um, the idea behind it making you a better fighter is that you are really driving home your structure and your technique while you're fighting. So while I practice my form, I practice that inward block followed by a punch or I practice a mantis hand or something along those lines, what I'm effectively doing is I'm reinforcing having that perfect block, that perfect punch, that strike to the eye, whatever it may be. Um, from these traditional old school standpoints. And in many ways, the form does do that. It absolutely reinforces structure. But when we look at a complete technique, a technique is more than just structure. Um, when you look at any given technique, let's just take a punch, a jab, for example. You have to observe that you have to have technique, accuracy, speed, power, and finesse to have a functional punch. So the technique would be in the form that your hand starts up, it travels in a straight line, strikes with the first two knuckles, and then draws back. That's technique, making sure that you're hitting, that you're doing this accurately, that you are executing the movement soundly. So that's the first part of it. But then you have accuracy, and forms don't really necessarily practice accuracy. They practice accuracy in movement, making sure that your hand does the same thing every time, but that's still technique. Accuracy is knowing whether I can punch one in the eye or in the base of the lip or to the throat or basically be able to take that and hit my target every single time. So you have technique, you have accuracy, then you have speed. And speed could be practiced in a form, but many times it's often uh, teachers will tell you not to speed up through the forms. But speed is simply minimizing the amount of time it takes to get from point A to point B. This may be by moving quickly, but it also can be about eliminating unnecessary movements like not pulling back, 
not um, not dropping down, not holding your breath before you hit. All these things improve your speed. And I would say that a form has the potential to help you with that. So you have the technique, accuracy, speed, power. Forms do not help with power. And no matter how much a traditional guy will tell me that forms help with power, the fact is the only way to really develop your power is by hitting things that are resisting you. So hitting a punching bag, hitting focus mitts, these are where you're gonna develop your power from. The a 75 pound, 100 pound hanging punching bag is the best possible way to develop your power. Really learning how to bend that bag and make it, make it wince when you hit it, that's gonna give you what you need. That's where you're gonna develop the most power. And perhaps a form will help you develop some muscles and some structure that will aid in your power, but ultimately it's not the best way to develop power. So you have technique, accuracy, speed, power, and then where it really fails, forms really fail, is teaching finesse. Finesse is things like setup, timing, trickery. <laughs> um, so for example, I may be throwing a punch, but if I stand in front of someone and I simply throw a punch like this, um, it's liable to land, but it's far more likely to be blocked. Finesse is things like, how does that punch fit into my overall movement? How does that punch um, connect to other punches? Can I throw this punch followed by this punch or throw a kick followed by that punch? And then how does that punch move into my footwork? Do I cut an angle and then hit the punch? Can I drop low and hit a punch? How can I fake with that punch? I fake this low shot, then I hit the high shot, or I fake a circular shot and then I hit the straight punch, um, or I drop this hand and when they try to take that, I come out and I hit. That's all finesse. And forms don't teach finesse because forms are stagnant, that they are not dynamic, that it's a rehearsed routine, and rehearsed routines, as Bruce Lee says, Rehearse routines lack the ability to adapt. And so when you study a form, you are effectively um, working two of the five way, um, aspects of a good technique. You have technique, accuracy, speed, power, and finesse. It definitely works technique for sure. Um, I would not say it works accuracy. It can work speed if that's what you're doing. Um, it's definitely not going to develop your power and it may even be actively working against your finesse because you're be because by Driving home that every single time you throw that punch you then follow it with this next movement It's making you a slightly more predictable fighter and it's going to be harder and harder to break from those patterns So that's the problem with forms. That's the idea what's good about forms. So in conclusion kind of wrapping this up um, a form is a rehearsed set of movements that is used to teach martial arts and to practice martial arts, oftentimes solo, but there are such things as two-man sets where they use two of them. Um, as far as my relationship with forms are concerned, I've studied martial arts that really put an emphasis on them, and I've studied martial arts that put no emphasis on them at all, so I have kind of a broad spectrum of different teachers as far as forms are concerned. As far as the positive sides of forms, that they help preserve history, they're fascinating, they're beautiful, and they're, I didn't mention it, but they're one hell of a workout a lot of times too. The downside of forms is that they are rehearsed routines that are only really focusing on one or two of the aspects that actually make for a good technique. So they're awfully limiting, and there's definitely better ways to practice. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to do forms, what's a good way to practice your martial art without it? Well, using some sort of striking implement, um, hitting a heavy bag, hitting focus mitts, working with a partner is crucial. I would argue that two-man sets, um, which are forms that take two people, are slightly better than, a, than, a, than an empty form, um, just you by yourself doing it. Um, but I think one of the best ways to develop your techniques is to have constant repetition you know, throwing 10,000 punches on a bag, throwing, you know, 100 kicks on a focus mitt. Um, and then once you have that technique down, then you work on having your partners um, throw punches and kicks at you and you defend and counter, defend and counter. And then eventually you work your way into sparring and then technique will be the ultimate teacher. The more you spar, the better you'll get. And that's really the, the key for me is that um, if you aren't sparring in martial arts, if you aren't actively working against an unwilling opponent every once in a while, preferably at the end of every class, um, 
then you're really just dancing. You aren't really getting a lot out of it as far as application is concerned. But then again, not everyone is going for application. I found out, I've had conversations with people where they've said that, oh, no, application's um, just a small part of the art, that overall it's about perfecting the body and, and realizing the true potential of the human character. And whereas I think martial arts has that aspect to it, um, I think the martial comes before art for a reason. That's called martial art, not an art that happens to be martial. <laughs> Maybe that's my own opinion. Um, so if you disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Um, I will probably, if this video gets a lot of likes or uh, comments, I'll probably do a Q&A based off the same concept later on. Um, if you do agree with me and you'd like to elaborate on what I've talked about today, once again, let me know in the comment section below. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.